Remember that? And I remember yep, like you'd yep. be like like Pat LaBelle coming in. We were like, man, we about to shut her, Patty shut her Kate. site down, y'all. Everybody Patty go to PatLaBelle.com. Right. And then boom, it'd be done. Then Steve Harvey come on, like, we told you y'all ain't ready for us. So I told him, I said at the time, I said, man, my goal is to get on Steve Harvey morning show. Right. We know we we knew we had a good product to get in front of people. We just needed we just needed to get in front of people, to get awareness. But he's like, then what happened? So I said, we get on there, we're gonna get a whole lot of traffic to the site. He's like, but then what happened? I said, well, I said, whenever we get a whole lot of traffic, we don't keep everybody. But normally, if we rise up, then when we come back down, we never come back down to where we started. So we retain a bunch of people. But he's like, but then what happened? And I said, well, you know, um, <laughs> you keep on trying to explain it, to me. right? You know, since I'm like, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm out here, right? So I'm like, you know, well, after that, as we get the people, we'll make money from advertising. But he was like, but then he kept asking me, but then what? And eventually, I had no no answer. And he was like, man, you need a product. Because he said, if them people come to the site, you got a product and they buy from you. Now you got customers. And that was when I realized that customers were greater, not equivalent to, not less than, but greater than readers. Right? Because at that time, I remember, like everything was just all about how many readers can I get? How many page views I got? How like, many that's the rate. I make all my money off of that. And then, you know, that started us down the path of creating product. When we started creating product, I started realizing that I could take back control. Because up to that point, like, again, we made all our money through advertising. So what I started realizing was that we were making less content to please the people and making more content to please the advertisers. Because if that's how we get paid, right, yep. then if I know the advertisers want to see this kind of content and they're looking for this for their brands and campaigns, then that's the kind of content I got to make. Yep. But when we started making product, the product was all about the people. I got to figure out what their pain point is. I got to know who I'm talking to. I got to know what they're dealing with. I got to know how to overcome the challenges they got. And when I do that, I'm literally, everything I'm doing is focused on that person that's coming to read to the site. So then when I do that, like everything changed. Then we start making money. The money we're making is directly from the consumer. Then we starting to make better product and better articles, right? Because we locked in exactly what they need on the front end to get them in. And then we sell them what they need on the back end to get them the help they need. And, and like I said, then it just blew up. So then I can go to the advertiser. They come to me and be like, hey, we want to do such and such. I'm like, nah. Like, then I could get real selective. About How many reviews did you do that you didn't want to do because he was an advertiser? Right, exactly, right? And, and it was, you know, I, I think about it before. Like, we never did stuff that just was straight out, like, against us. Right? I remember we had a, uh, uh, we'd have, like, check cash in places come to us. And they'd be like, you got all these black people. You know, we do, we give this money for check. I was like, no, I'm not doing no payday not loans. No checking to go. <laughs> right, I'm not doing no payday loans, no check. Like, y'all ain't going to get me. But then it's, it's a lot of gray area stuff. We're, like, stuff we weren't passionate about. That's what, about. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, it came that's what I'm talking about. So we did it, right? We're like, man, I don't use this stuff, but oh, whatever. you know, whatever, put this little t-shirt on, do this little dance, right? And get it. <laughs> but when we started serving the customer, then we really could say, you know what? We turned down 80% of the, the ad stuff and we only want 20%. The real stuff that we like, yeah, I've been driving this car for the last eight years. So I would love to do something because this is what we get around in every day, right? This is what we drive our kids into. So I believe it. And like I said, it, it just changed everything. But when that process of creating product, we also got really good at selling it, right? We got good at marketing. We got good at doing live events. We do, um, we start doing documentary films. So we make docs and then sell them DVD, then bundle up DVDs, then do screeners with three, four, 500 people in the theater sold out. And, and then we start doing tours, right? We do our own 10 city tours. So in all of this marketing, it was a lot of people that saw us because we had a big community. Uh, we had over 500,000 people on Facebook. We've been doing mm -hmm. about 300,000 plus readers a month. So we rolled like a million people a quarter. And people kept saying, like, like they saw me and Ronnie start. It's just like a husband and wife in our bedroom. Then they saw us. Now we got an editor. Now we got, you know, 40 plus freelance writers. Now they're in the office. So they literally saw the business being built in front of them. And they started coming to us saying, hey, can you teach me how to build a business like you did? And then that's where the birth of traffic sales and profit came. Just we started. And now you have a product. Entrepreneurship. And really, that's where my... Um, we we like the marriage stuff, but my real, real passion is on entrepreneurship. Because I told you from a child, I always know I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I was always reading that magazine. I didn't say know how to do it. So once we learn how to do some things, um, then I love like showing other people, especially um, in our community, how they can do the same things, right? We close generational wealth gap through entrepreneurship. So that's how you guys came up with. So basically you, you said like, well, so what was the first original product? That you all was it was it merch? Nah, the first um well on the black and Mary with kids side yeah. of the product. Yeah, black and Mary with kids, the first product was um, I think it was a DVD. It's yeah, a DVD, it was, okay. It was DVD, and we had no previous experience. So my man Jenks, the same guy, 
this is uh 2009 so he had just he had just bought an hd camera sold me his old sd camera and i just bought some stuff on the website but one day i was talking to my wife ronnie and i was like you know what? i think we should do them because i'm always trying to like how can we outpace everybody else and just think next level so i said you know i've I seen this movie and i love it and it was, i was in the conversation so i said i think we should do a movie but i was like we ain't got no money to pay nobody to do a movie i said like you do splits on stuff i'm like you know it's cool till the money come in then it's like what are we gonna do with it it was just like a whole bunch of questions. And I and she said, Well, you got the camera. I think you can do it. And I don't know why she said that, right? Because I because it was wild. And <laughs> loosely, if you saw the first movie, you might be like, Well, actually, you couldn't do it. <laughs> that first movie is trash. You could have outsourced it. <laughs> right. But you know, so what happens? Um, I took his camera, I got some like you know, two hundred dollar lights off of Amazon, uh, got this just these janky microphones off of Amazon that were terrible. And for two weeks after work every day, I just went and interviewed couples. And then, you know, I got this uh, Dell laptop and this uh, editing software called Sony Vegas from Best Buy. And I just was like in my little bedroom. I remember that. I, remember, I know that. I know that program. <laughs> yeah, man. Like $70 at Best Buy. So like literally yeah. I just was at home editing stuff together, making it. Um, and our very first screen in uh, Connecticut Avenue, Northwest D.C., we sold out. It was 160 seats. And I, I didn't know like what the goal was. I don't remember what the goal was, how we was going to do it. But we sold out. And I couldn't believe it. Like, I was like, man, how did, like 160 people came out here to watch a movie we made. And at that event, we also had t-shirts. So we sold t-shirts down oh, the line, yeah. right? Um, but like I said, we just learned. So that was the first thing. Then we came out, we came out with another movie the next year. And then the next year. So we did a movie every year for five years straight. And then ended up doing two more down the line. But in that, again, like I said, we got good. And then we started doing bundles. Then we started, like I said, People like, hey, come to my city. Start traveling different cities. Then we learn how to market in cities that we didn't live in. And like I said, literally, just a progression going step by step. Man, that is that's that's that's, that's so. With, we're, we're transitioning to now, you being more of a coach mentorship. Mm -hmm. What if for you is some of the three of the the things that people don't know that they could do to take that to the next level? They have right in front of them because most time people are like, oh man, I don't have. The budget yeah. for do do the IG post. I mean, I don't have the budget for the Twitter things. What is like the tangible things that they could do that you've seen? That's great because all those excuses. And this is what yeah. I tell you: like, like a lot of times people make uh, they make every excuse. They try to disqualify people that are successful, and they make every excuse about you know, well, you know, they in some certain situation that the person successful is not in. But what they don't know, like I've had a chance to, to coach and look up close to hundreds of six figure companies. Um, uh, probably now in the ballpark of 50 or so seven figure companies and five eight figure companies you work directly with, right? Eight figures on 10 million a year. And what I'm gonna tell you is they face all the struggles. <laughs> they didn't came from the same beginning stretch, whatever, right? That everybody else has. The difference is for one, they got a different type of grit. Meaning when stuff happened, they keep going, right? Um, you know, I tell people all the time your business don't care. Your business don't care about your personal life, it don't care about you getting sick, it don't care about you know, somebody, you know, close to you passing. It don't care about your romantic relationships. You together, not together, divorce, break up, come back together again. Your business don't, your business want to eat every single day. Yes. <laughs> and, and what I realized, right, is the most successful people, they have to compartmentalize their emotions to the side. And emotions don't impact the business. When things happen in their personal life, it don't throw their business off the rails. You know, probably everybody listening has had a time when they hired somebody, if you work with small business, right? You hire a small business, to do something and then something happened in their personal life and they go ghost on you. Mm -hmm. And you're like, man, I'm sorry that happened to you. <laughs> but I still but got stuff to get, get But done. once you took my money, I need my stuff yeah. done, right? But like so many business owners operate like that. So I'll, I'll tell you this, the three things. Number one, most people have a great product or service. They just don't have enough eyeballs on it. There's traffic, right? So they need more leads. Like people got to see it. And we talk about people seeing it. Uh, you need to be doing one of three things. I, I, um, my mentor told me a long time ago, forget new traffic, you either build it, borrow it, or buy it. And we talk about building it. That's organic, right? That's like I'm posting on social, um, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies. I'm mm -hmm. going to networking events. Um, um, you know, asking you who you know, if you know people, like all the organic stuff. Borrowing traffic is when you go out and find somebody who already got an audience. So back in the day, if you were a marriage, you know, therapist or something like that or a counselor, you would come to us, Black and Married with Kids, because we already had hundreds of thousands of people on the list. And get a guest blog going. Exactly. So instead of you trying to start your own thing, that would be crazy. You can come to us who already got the built-in audience and we need people like you. And then boom, you can tap in right away if you got the talent and skill set for it. And then the last thing is buying it. That's paid traffic. That's advertising. 
That's like Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Google, TV, radio, whatever it is. And too many times, small businesses, even when we were successful, right? Um, people's not successful yet say, I don't have the money to advertise. People that are successful say, well, I'm getting all this money, all this traffic free. Why I got to pay for it? <laughs> but, but that was, we were getting like, say, 100,000 people a month. But one day I thought about it, Darren. I said, hold up. I said, if McDonald's advertise, Nike advertise, Walmart advertise, Macy's, I can go down the list, right? Yeah. All them advertise would make me think that I shouldn't have to. Because do more or people start advertising when the numbers go down instead exactly. of when it's like, late. oh, well, we kind of falling off. Now we got to we got to do some ads now. And, and that's the thing, right? Because I'm like, if Nike got 97 percent market share in basketball shoes, but they still run ads for basketball and everybody know Nike, don't nobody know me. <laughs> so, so what make me it's like wild the way we think right so one you know people got to get more traffic they got to get more eyeballs for this stuff in front of more people um number two people need to have better offers right like i really try to focus on people have irresistible offers because a lot of times people see what you got but it just ain't enough to make the move and you're thinking that hey you know most people either like it or don't nah i would say most people are just sitting on the fence they're not even like yes or no they just like i don't know i'm gonna come back later right so is the offer good enough to make them not just take action, but to take action now. To say, you know what I mean? Think about like something in the past that you've seen where you literally was like,